Now let's talk about some basics of magnetism. Magnetism is a lot of fun and is actually the basis for a lot of magic tricks. Okay, think of some kinds of magnets that you know about. You know, refrigerator magnets, bar magnets, horseshoe magnets. These are all magnets that follow the same basic principles that we're going to discuss in this unit. There are many uses for magnets. Electromagnets can be very strong, and you can see here this is picking up a large amount of scrap metal. So electromagnets are very good for picking up heavy loads. Um, magnets are used in motors and loudspeakers, so I guess they're uses to make noise. All right, magnetic tapes. These were a big deal when I was young. Um, they used to be sound and video recording equipment, but I'm certainly dating myself. Some of the coolest, coolest unit uses for magnets is uh, the superconducting magnets for levitating trains in Japan. This is actually um, a, a picture of, of one of those trains. Now, magnets are like electric fields in many ways. They exert forces with no contact whatsoever, and the magnitude depends upon the distance you are from the magnet. Now, remember a field is just a region, and so a magnetic field is a region around a magnet where uh, the magnetic force can be detected, and it surrounds every magnetic material. Now, the direction is always from north to south. You can think of the north as being positive and the south as being negative, and pretty much the same rules we did for charges are going to apply here. It's always strongest at the poles, and then it gets weaker as you get further away. Now, domains are the fundamentals of magnets. They're just clusters of aligned atoms, and they can be found quite naturally in iron. Now, each domain is perfectly magnetized and aligned. This is, a, uh, this is a picture of a needle that is not magnetized. And you can see the domains are all kind of random. One's going this way, one's going this way. So this is not magnetic. When we align them, say by stroking this with a strong magnet, then the, the domains line up and suddenly this needle becomes a, a magnet itself. Near a strong magnet, the domains get oriented, they rotate, they actually turn. Um, when you take the strong magnet away, then it maintains its magnetism for some time. But thermal motion, dropping, uh, whacking the magnet can return the random arrangement. So be very careful with your magnets. Don't drop them because you actually decrease uh, their magnetic strength. Now let's talk about poles. The poles, as you know, are at the end of magnets. You've got a north pole and a south pole, and these poles are what produces the magnetic forces. Now remember, iron is going to be very strongly attracted to the north and south poles. However, the poles are named for the behavior of magnets on Earth. Now remember, north attracts south, and south attracts north. So when you hang a magnet and the north end of the magnet points to the North Pole, then that means it's being attracted to a South Pole. So it's almost like we were to hollow the Earth out and put in a great big South-North bar magnet. Now, there's not a great big South-North bar, bar magnet in the Earth. But if there were, then this it would produce the same sort of field behaviors. Uh, north, uh, the pole points north, i.e. it's north seeking. And the south pole points south, that is, it's south seeking. So when you have a compass, the ends point toward magnetic north, not true north. Magnetic north and geographic north are off by about 11.5 degrees. And there are many fascinating studies behind what happens when this declination changes. And I don't know, uh, you know, there are theories that this is one of the causes of the ice age. Now, this difference between the geographic north and the magnetic north is called the magnetic declination. For the most part, we're down here in Houston. It doesn't matter to us. Um, if you're, however, 
up in the North Pole area, the magnetic declination becomes very important if you're trying to find a, uh, a geographic position. Now, what causes the Earth's magnetic field? We don't know. We honestly don't. Um, they believe that the movement of the charges in the core causes the strong magnetic field. And that's related to the planet's rotation. Remember, likes repel, opposites attract. Different from electric fields, magnetic poles always occur in pairs. If I were to take a magnet and break it in two, then I would get two magnets. I could have a single positive charge or a single negative charge, but I cannot have a monopole. To make a magnet, one way is to simply rub them with a permanent magnet, and that aligns the domain, like we discussed before. Now, the nature of magnetic field is it's so cool. Remember, every charge is surrounded by an electric field. And it turns out, if I have a charge that's moving, it is surrounded by a magnetic field as well. You've heard of the electromagnetic spectrum. This is exactly where it comes from. Now, what charges are moving in a bar magnet, folks? Well, in any metal, there are electrons. And it is the spin of the electrons that causes the magnetic field. Now, why aren't most materials magnets? Well, remember that electron uh, spin. And pairs of electrons spin spinning in the same direction cause a much stronger magnet. And if they're spinning in opposite directions, they actually cancel each other out. And the reality is, most materials have spins in opposite directions, which is uh, iron um, is easily magnetized, so it tends to want to spin in the same direction.